going to react to this, I think, in two ways. One, they're going to have to cut some essential programs, and quickly, in a way that is not going to be easy, meaning that our students are going to be significantly impacted. But also, and equally important, they're going to have to raise property, school property taxes. They simply will have to meet um, a deficit, uh, a, you know, a budget gap that's just too significant just to be addressed by cuts alone. Why do I think this is important? Well, first of all, it's wrong for Berks County. As I've talked about, talked to people about property taxes throughout the district, they've been very, very clear that they can't take any more increases in school property taxes. I understand, having been a county commissioner and also being in education, what state mandates can do to you as far as having to, um, you know, uh, force you into programs or uh, restrictions on programs that aren't necessarily the best in the best interest of education or in government. But nevertheless, you have to do it. Governor's budget and my and my opponent's endorsement of cuts across the board without any relief uh, from some of the state mandates that school districts are forced to um, comply with just is not based in reality. I'm very, very concerned about it because we're going to be getting those school property tax bills soon and that's, people are going to be outraged when they see them. My belief is, you know, that education is the key to opportunity. Not only has the governor uh, looked at basic education, but he's also cutting higher education significantly. 52%, for example, for our state-funded schools, Penn State, I don't know how you can make up a deficit, a shortfall of that significance without extreme cuts, not only in staff, but also in sites, in research. And these are programs that help bring opportunity to Pennsylvania students, as well as to our citizens. These are, these are critical, critical issues. I believe that the key to opportunity is education, and Larry Medallia, <laughs> and the Republican majority are taking us in the wrong direction on this. I felt so strongly about this. It's not just a partisan issue. This is an issue that impacts all of us here in Pennsylvania. We've got to stop it. I want people to be alerted to it as they go to the polls. We're, we're traveling down the wrong path, and we need to let those folks know how we feel about it. Thank you. The governor had made some proposals for how educators could kind of fill in that budget gap, taking a pay freeze, things like that. And he's basically said there is no money at the state level to help everybody anymore. And, and he says people elected him to make these cuts. Do you feel that that it helps your campaign, hurts your campaign, when he says there's such an appetite right now for these, these cuts in Pennsylvania? I don't think people have an appetite for the kinds of cuts that are going to, in turn, raise their property taxes. For example, Larry took a no-tax pledge, but what good is that to you as a, a, you know, a citizen who resides in a school district who's going to face a higher property tax increase? Makes no sense at all. He's passing the buck, and I think people need to be alerted to that. As per the governor's idea, the fact that there has to be shared sacrifice, there is no shared sacrifice here. For example, the governor is leaving $150 million on the table in the Marcellus um, Shale tax on gas extraction that could be enacted, should have been enacted, in fact, in last year's budget, but somehow did not happen. And as a result, the rest of us are having to pay. In the meantime, those corporations are getting away scot-free. That's wrong. That's wrong to make our students pay and give benefits to corporations. That money could fill that gap significantly. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't cover everything, and I do understand the need for cuts. And I support, in fact, some of the cuts that the governor made. There's going to be some efficiencies that I think that are important, but education is just too important and it impacts us directly. Whether you're a senior or a student, um, this, this is just, it's wrong. It's wrong, and I'm very, very concerned about the position that Larry Medallia has taken on this and the, the Republican Party. I'm anxious to get there for the budget hearing so that I can help to speak out about this. Judy, can we get more concrete suggestions from you as to how much can be cut in education? He's saying 50%. Would you be satisfied with 10, 15, 20, what? Well, 
When you look at the overall education cuts to, um, to, bait to our school districts, for example, it's approximately, um, in Berks County at least, and probably across the board in the state, about 15 to 20 percent. I would think a more reasonable approach would be one to look at in the range of 10 percent, which is basically what school districts were anticipating and have been budgeting for. And you know what I would do if I, I, would, I would simply say that we need to convene the stakeholders here. I don't believe, because I've been following it closely, that the governor sat down with school superintendents. Has he sat down with teachers? Has he sat down with taxpayers to talk about how can we adjust our education budget appropriately so that we don't mortgage our future just simply by slashing the education budget? I think we can look at other areas within the budget. For example, the Department of Corrections went, actually is going to get an increase. So in other words, we care more about locking people up than we do about educating students. Does not make sense to me whatsoever. And furthermore, I noticed also that we didn't look at uh, the state legislature and their budget. The budget, uh, for example, the, you know, the increases that uh, state employees are asked to be, you know, to commit to health insurance and other benefits, I think the state legislators should also step up to the plate. And the pay freeze the same way. Had I been the governor, I think I would have approached some of these, uh, you know, the, the labor unions as well as some of the other stakeholders and talked about what's anticipated, how together can we get at the cuts that need to be made, and how can we make education better. It didn't happen. Well, the governor is proposing over $800 million in corporate tax credits. Two-thirds of corporations who operate in Pennsylvania already pay no taxes. Do you see a co comparison here with what's happening in Wisconsin? I, th I, I don't know that it, it's a, e equal necessarily to what's happening in Wisconsin, but I see a different, definite tilt towards providing more benefits to corporate Pennsylvania rather than to the taxpayers, the middle class of Pennsylvania. I mean, there have been, you know, certainly I understand that we need to create a better tax environment for more businesses to land in, in, Berks, in Pennsylvania. In fact, that's part of my job plan. But I don't think that not addressing, for example, the Delaware loophole that you're talking about, where 70 percent of Pennsylvania corporations incorporate outside of the state so they don't have to report all their income, is the appropriate way to uh, address the business climate issue. Do you Governor think hasn't got at some yeah. of the issues that he needs to address. Do you think it's fair that uh, a corporation that operates only in Pennsylvania should pay taxes when corporation, multinational corporations and national companies can use the Delaware loophole to pay none? That's exactly what I'm getting at. No, I don't think it's fair. We're, the people, they're not paying their fair share, for sure. How We're, does this, oh, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. How does this proposal a week before the election, in your opinion, change this election here? I think it sends a clear message to uh, Berks County citizens, the, you know, the constituents of the 11th Senatorial District, that you have a clear choice in the individual that you're going to send to um, Harrisburg, someone who will fight for um, corporations, for tax benefits, for the, the most wealthy among us, versus someone who understands what the middle class is facing. And I. Are you for taxpayers or are you not? And I believe that I'm the choice that is for taxpayers.